Defence, good morning and thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this morning. Uh, in morning. my opening remarks for the show at 9 o'clock, I said that uh, our public transport system, firstly, is not affordable to the poor. I mean, 18% of South African households, of the poor households, spend 20% of their income on transport uh, every time. That's according to official statistics. The system itself is not more than enough. It's not integrated enough. And uh, people just can't afford it. Yeah, that, that's partly true. Um, and to be quite honest, I think we, we, we need to classify or we need to expand our classification even beyond income because um, people also have time budgets um, and also people basically experience transportation services in different ways. Um, Prasa has had significantly inter very interesting targets that they haven't been able to achieve. Um, you've got minibus taxi services and entities that are performing well on one side. On, on the other side, they have um, underground cartel and operation, operational difficulties. Then you have um, new opportunities for um, major reforms in our municipalities where they're trying to establish transport authorities that would probably make things easier um, in terms of public transport policy implementation. So it's a bit of a tough space to be in at the moment in South Africa, but we do have a lot of opportunities for change, especially through the new technologies. There has been a lot of discussion in the past about the need to integrate uh, the system, and we've seen the Riavayas of Johannesburg, Ariengs mm. of Tswane, and uh, mm. trying to connect them to even give access to people who live far from the, from the CBDs. Is integration a, a, a way to go? Yes, integration is, a, is the way to go. Um, however, it, it, it's not always about integrating uh, public transport modes with um, each other, but it, it also is basically about integrating transportation, mobility and access services um, in a way that basically helps anyone who's trying to travel to use the service to its best of its characteristics. So if you're traveling far and the trains are pretty fast, if they were fast, then you'd probably want to use um, your car or a bicycle to park somewhere and then basically catch a train to make the rest of the trip. Then when you get off, you could use your taxi to basically complete the commute. That would be an integrated environment. Um, however, we, we're more in a space where we're looking for the technologies, we're, we're developing the right policies and the requirements, um, but we're not leaning into the existing opportunities like moving hunting as a platform for your, your colleague who's stuck in a train right now. That person could actually download the app and figure out what time they were going to arrive long before they actually made the trip. Um, but that's not part of Prasa. That's something that is happening parallel. You know, it's an entrepreneur just doing their own thing. So we're missing out on real opportunities to integrate. And, and, and offense, very briefly, we tend to focus on the big metros for, for, yeah. for, for an obvious reason, because they tend to be the drivers of the economy. Yeah. They're the engines yeah. of commerce and all kinds of other economic activities. But if you yeah. move away from the metros, the rural areas also need an effective yeah. public transport system, either around their areas or to connect them to the big cities. Absolutely. You know, um, the integrated urban development framework uh, actually is not just about urban development. It argues that urban and rural development need to coexist. And for our economy to be productive, we need to be leaning into the spaces and places that just don't have the kind of mobility and access services that exist. So if in a small town you guys are manufacturing or you've got some agricultural activities, but you, it's very difficult for you to go from home to your place of work or from home to an education center. What you're doing is you're taking away um, an opportunity from someone that actually needs it way more um, and requires that access. And in fact, some municipalities don't get the kind of allocations that they need in order for them to implement public transport solutions that would add value to them. So we, we, we need to prioritize emerging cities, um, small towns, and rural areas in particular. Thank you very much, Ufense Mukwena, Transport Economics Lecturer at the University of the Northwest.